Baringa. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Uh, I've long been advocating for a Commonwealth Integrity Commission uh, and was pleased to see that the funding allocated to the Integrity Commission from last year's budget remains. So to the Attorney-General. I was also pleased that the average staffing levels for that commission stand at 76 people this year, according to the budget papers, and that's in addition to the 88 people that the Australian Law Enforcement Integrity Commission already maintains. In last year's budget, I accepted uh, there were 39 people allocated because the budget papers said that the Commonwealth Integrity Commission would be established by 1 January 2020. Now, of course, it wasn't and still hasn't been, and in fact, it won't be as under the current government plans, it won't be until March next year at the earliest, in light of the consultation, uh, extensive consultation phase, uh, phase announced. With an average staffing level of 76 over the course of the financial year, that's a pretty big workforce to come on board between March and 30 June. While I welcome the commitments, it's difficult to see how these 76 people will be employed given the government has just announced a six month consultation process on an exposure draft that it first put out nearly two years ago and has not incorporated any of the feedback received since. I'd like to use the opportunity to ask the Attorney General for more detail on the proposed consultation process to better understand how those 76 people will be gainfully employed in that effort. I'd also like to ask the Attorney General for a clearer picture of the timeline from the conclusion of the consultation process to the standing up, to the setting up of the Integrity Commission. The consultation conducted to date has been ineffective, and I call on the government to accelerate that consultation timeline and immediately incorporate provisions to enable public hearings, greater avenues for referrals for whistleblowers, and broaden the definition of corrupt conduct. While consultation is necessary, this timeline will delay the implementation of a Commonwealth Integrity Commission. The proposed model is very similar to the model that was already proposed back in 2018 and was widely condemned as not being strong enough. So I continue to support the member for Indi's bill presented to Parliament last month in relation to the establishment of an Australian Federal Integrity Commission. That bill has been through significant consultation and has the support from a wide variety of judges and experts in integrity, as well as the Australian Federal Police Association, which is more than, uh, at the moment, there appears to be for the current Attorney-General's draft legislation. The Australian Federal Integrity Commission is significantly stronger than the model proposed by the government and addresses the concerns outlined. The government model presents two commissions, one for public sector and another for law enforcement. The government model embeds a double standard where parliamentarians and other public servants are held to a lower level of scrutiny than law enforcement officials. Law enforcement have a lower threshold for corruption and a different definition and may be exposed through a public hearing while parliamentarians and public servants are not. Some of the key concerns with the proposed legislation are the lack of public hearings for the public sector integrity division meaning that only Law Enforcement Integrity Division will have the power to have public hearings. Parliamentarians and other public servants will not appear publicly. The definition of corruption differs depending on whether it was conducted by law enforcement or parliamentarians. Corruption should be defined consistently and fairly, with a broad definition of corrupt conduct should apply, and greater avenues for referral need to be permitted and protections for whistleblowers created to generate true public accountability and transparency. On the current definition, the referral pathways, this body would not be able to investigate recent events such as sports rorts, the Leppington land sale or forgery of documents. So the definition restricts the Commission from investigating unless there is a reasonable suspicion of a criminal offence. This sets a very different standard to public expectation and will preclude investigation into very important incidents. Attorney-General, will you reflect on the feedback and amend the model proposed? 